Christmas You can count on me Please have snow and mistletoe And presents under the tree Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas if only in my Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Wow, this year has definitely been a huge surprise. This Christmas, with all that's going on, we wanted to make it portable for you to be able to join with your family wherever you are. Some of you might be traveling and others might be at home. Wherever you are, because of the Spirit of God in our church family, we hope to make it feel more like home. And speaking of home, welcome to the Purse Strokes. In the spirit of being home for Christmas, we are going to be welcoming you into the homes of some of our Connect Church family as well. Not only are we all home for Christmas, but it's kind of like one big surprise party, and everyone is invited. We hope you enjoy the message and the music of Home for Christmas. Welcome to our home. We were just talking to our kids about one of their favorite subjects, presents. Hey kids, are you wondering what you're going to get for Christmas? Yeah! What are some of the things that you asked for? A keyboard and a basketball hoop. A trampoline. One of the best parts of Christmas can be the surprise of it all. What kind of gifts are we going to get? Is it going to snow? Months before Christmas came the biggest surprise of all. A young teenager named Mary was planning to get married, and all of a sudden, an angel appeared to her with a message. Let's read from Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Kids, can you imagine the surprise that Mary must have felt in that moment? Well, that's a much bigger deal than a present under a Christmas tree. Dad, why didn't 
the angel ring Mary Nintendo Switch. Why did she have to have a baby? Oh. Well, God sent his son as a baby because it was the biggest gift he could ever have given to us. We needed a savior, and that savior would show up in the form of a baby, which was a surprise to everyone. We all knew we needed a savior, but never could have imagined he would show up like this. Let's sing this next song together about how God's children prayed for God to send a savior to the earth.
Hey Connect fam, welcome to our home. This is our first Christmas together as a married couple and it's really exciting for us as we start our new family. It's easy to see that Mary was totally surprised by this news. And being newlyweds, we've had a few surprises ourselves. Planning a wedding during coronavirus and having to totally change our plans. And since we've been married, we've had other fun surprises like unexpected home repairs, car problems, changes in work schedules, and just learning what marriage is all about. But through all of it, God has always been with us and has blessed us in amazing ways. Let's take a look at how Mary responded to the surprise she just received from the angel Gabriel. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered here, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. We've definitely experienced some unplanned surprises this year, but nothing like what Mary experienced. I think we would all admit that we never would have expected Christmas or 2020 to work out like this. Some of you are still trying to figure out how to navigate this unplanned surprises in your life. Maybe you've been struggling in a relationship or you have health struggles. Maybe your work and your career aren't going the way you planned. Maybe you're mourning or grieving a loss. Or maybe the bills are piling up and you're not sure where to turn. We want you to know that you aren't alone. And just like the Holy Spirit was with Mary and the Holy Spirit has been with Chris and I, God is with you too.
Hello, Connect family, and welcome to the Mankey House. You know, through all of the surprise that life brings, one thing that we can know is that God is with us. Greta, can you share a time when you were surprised by a gift at Christmas? Well, I remember one time when we got a trampoline. You guys just put a blanket over this <laughs> giant box, and for some reason Sam and I sat on that blanket, that box, the entire morning and opened our presents and then realized afterwards that it was a present. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was... um. Uh, coffee table we had, just a blanket over it, and then whenever he took it off, it was on um, the trampoline. So we actually slipped one by. We surprised you that time. That doesn't happen often, does it? Um, speaking of unplanned surprises, I have seen and experienced these things firsthand through my ministry at Hand in Hand Pregnancy Center. We see moms come in all the time that are just scared and pregnant and just don't know what to do. But we are able to, through the amazing technology of ultrasound, to be able to show them that um, life is a gift from God. They see on that ultrasound that little baby's heartbeat, and those little babies, when you can see it, first see their heartbeat, are about the size of a grain of rice. And it's just so amazing to see, and I always tell the mom it's all heart at that point because it is. It's like all you see is this amazing heartbeat in there. And no matter what, where they've been or what kind of circumstances they are in, we have a chance to show them that miracle life right there on the screen right next to them. And it's amazing to see their faces when they get to see those baby, that baby's heartbeat for the first time. It's pretty awesome. Mary and Joseph didn't have ultrasound, obviously, but they did have the angel Gabriel who came and told them about uh, the fact that they were going to deliver the Messiah into the world. Uh, and as Mary's womb began to grow within her, uh, they started making plans like any couple would. But as many plans do, uh, they change as time goes on and circumstances happen. Um, and that's what happened in this story. King Caesar at that time, wanting to make sure he was getting all the money he could from the people, demanded that a census be taken. And so Mary and Joseph had to pack up and move in the middle of this pregnancy. Wow, I cannot imagine moving. And I hate moving as it is, so put a baby into the plans there, and that makes it even much more stressful than I can even imagine. So I don't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, well, it gets even worse. Uh, they had to move, and uh, while they're in the process of moving, Mary's water breaks. If you can imagine that, going on this long journey, and she's going into labor. Uh, so quickly, they're trying to find a place, but because of the census, there was no homes available for them to stay in, uh, no hotels at that time for them to stay in. And so, you know, they had no place to go, and she's in labor. Yeah, I cannot imagine that either. I'm just stressed out thinking about that. Right. So, our Savior, Jesus, ends up being born in a stable, and the little precious baby laid in a feeding trough, a manger. Why would God even let his son be born that way? It doesn't make any sense. Well, that's a good question. A lot of people have thought about that. You know, Jesus came into the world uh, and not to live on earth as a king, but he actually came and lived on this earth as a servant, right? And he experienced all of the things that we experienced. He experienced the good things, but he also experienced all the trials that life has to offer. Um, and that's just what's so amazing about our Jesus. It's totally encouraging to me to see when I think about Jesus and that he lived on this earth and felt all the same feelings and went through a lot of the same um, trials and struggles that we go through that you know I know that Jesus can relate to what we go through while we're here on this broken world. Follow the star to a place unexpected Would you believe after all we project a child in a manger lowly and small the weakest of all the likeliest hero wrapped in his mother shawl just a child is this who we've waited for cause how many kings stepped out from their thrones how many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me?
step down from their thrones How many lords have who been in their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts To romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Holy One did that for me. Oh, all for me. All for you. Merry Christmas from the Browns. 2020 has been one big surprise after the next for our family too. I don't know about your situation, but we found ourselves trying to work both from the office and from home. We've experienced never ending challenges of hybrid school. We can fully relate to Zoom fatigue and the stresses of where to buy toilet paper. But at the same time, God has been with us and has blessed our family. Boys, what would you say has been the biggest surprise of 2020? Not being able to leave home. Yeah. Being on lockdown, huh? Yeah. Ah. What about you, bud? Not eating at our favorite restaurants. Yeah, that's been pretty tough. See, what's awesome about this is that we know that Jesus can fully relate to the struggles and the surprises of everyday life. He didn't come to, the, to this earth as a king. He came to this earth as a homeless baby who was laid in a manger and would be, would be raised up by a simple carpenter. And the night Jesus was born, we see that the amazing time of praise and worship that was led by the angels and witnessed by a bunch of ordinary everyday people that were so surprised that they wouldn't even know what to do with themselves. Think about that, that's pretty cool. It's important that we see how Jesus was not only born in the most humble way possible, but he came to earth not to hang out with the kings, but with the simple everyday people like a bunch of shepherds. Let's read this together. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!
truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break for the slave is our brother.
As we just learned, Jesus didn't come to this earth as a king, but as a humble servant. And God made it very clear that He loved all people, not just Jews, but also Gentiles, and not just the wealthy, but the poor, and not just kings, but lowly shepherds. He wasn't concerned about social status. He wanted to become the Savior of all of us. So what should we do about all of this? God did the hard work by sending Jesus, and Jesus carried the heavy burden by living life on earth, having never sinned, and would eventually die for us. What about Mary and Joseph? Well, Mary was fearful, but then hopeful. Joseph must have been angry, then scared, then filled with faith. It must have seemed like life was out of control for them. And you might feel that way this year. Do you feel like life is out of control? So how can we respond to God? How can we respond to this message? Well, the only thing we can do is believe and follow. Mary and Joseph, they didn't have all the answers, but they did have belief. And then they trusted God and took the next steps. And what about the shepherds? Those guys had no idea what was going on. They were just out in the fields watching over their animals when all of a the sudden, these angels showed up and started singing. Scripture says they were filled with great fear, but God comforted them and led them to follow. Today, the circumstances surrounding your life might bring you stress, anxiety, and even fear. I want to invite you to do what the shepherds did. They went to see Jesus, they followed. After the angels left, they decided that they wanted to go and experience this child that they had heard so much about, and they experienced God through Jesus. Today, I invite you to experience God through Jesus. And the way that we take that next step of faith is by praying, and praying is talking to God. Wherever you're at right now, let's pray together. God, we thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus, and God, today, I ask that you forgive me of my sin. I admit that I can't do life on my own. It's too much. And today, I turn from my way and I wanna follow your way. Just like Mary and Joseph took the step to follow God, just like the, the, the shepherds took the step to follow God, today, I want to follow you. Come into my life and save me. Thank you for coming into my life. We ask this in your name. Amen. When all I see is a battle, do you see my victory? i uh -huh. 
laid on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, that belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh God, that belongs to you. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the Here we go. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet. I sing through the night, oh God, that it belongs to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high, oh God, that it belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I sing through the night, oh God, that it belongs. so much for joining us for our Christmas Eve service online. This is our favorite time of the service where we light our candles together as a church family. And even though we're not all together in the same room, you can light up your candles from your living room or from wherever you are. We're celebrating that Jesus Christ came to be the light of the world. But not only did he come to be the light of the world, but he came to make us the light of the world. So let's light our candles together as we prepare to sing Silent Night.